Yo, what's going on everybody? So, Boruto episode 127 is done and in the books and this episode got to start with the opening because I know a lot of people are going to be asking questions on it. So, obviously the opening did kind of foreshadow what we're going to be getting later on in this month with the whole Boruto meets Naruto arc that Masashi Kishimoto directly asked Studio Periot to do and I've told you guys in the past, I'm not super excited for that but I did like a few of the little small nods that are in there and I think that in this opening and you do have an opportunity for a few small scenes like with Naruto and Boruto eating at the Ichiraki ramen shop and potentially another father-son Rasengan. I do think you got an opportunity to see stuff like that simply for the fact that when you look at Naruto merchandising, that's going to be something they'll be able to sell. So all that out the way as far as the opening. This episode, I love it and it's because it's dealing with one of my favorite characters in Jiraiya. Like there, there are a few characters in the Naruto series where if you put them in the episode, even if you just reference them on a repeated basis like I'm gonna completely fanboy over it. and I like the fact that Jiraiya is remembered as a legendary shinobi but he's also <laughs> he's also remembered as the author of some legendary smut <laughs> this was so awesome man and I gotta say this much too right there are a few other scenes in this episode where they're directly paying off some of the stuff from the manga. In particular, I fanboyed once you got to the part where Kiba was telling Sada like, hey, the only reason why Naruto became Hokage is because I turned it down. Now, those of you who have read the Naruto manga know why that's so huge because if you go to Naruto chapter 700, which was never adapted into the Boruto anime or the Naruto Shippuden anime, when you go to Boruto chapter 700, you actually get that moment where Kiba's talking to his girlfriend, Tamaki, and he's just talking off the side of his mouth like, yeah, I guess that kid Naruto is kind of special, but the only reason why he became Okage is because I turned down the role of 7th Okage. So I like that moment there, and I like how Sarda was just throwing some indirect shade there. Like, Sarda, like, like matter of fact, I'm just going to say she was just throwing some complete shade. Like, she looking right at him saying, like, yo, I ain't heard any of that before. And then the way that her eyes are just drawn, like, where they're, everything's whited out, and she's pushing up her glasses. Like, Sarda's like, this dude is so so full of it and Boruto's like oh wow Kiba you're pretty awesome <laughs> I, I like that I thought that was cool I also thought it was cool how when Hinata is talking to Boruto and explaining to him about what kind of man Jiraiya is you know it starts off very very cool but at the same time like you gradually get these moments where you can tell Hinata's just she's getting swept up in the nostalgia like thinking about young Naruto just had Hinata on some wet wet stuff and what I really like is is how She's like, yeah, you know, Boruto, like, I know you, I know you like Sasuke, but, you know, Naruto's master, Naruto's master was pretty strong, too. Naruto's master was even stronger than your father and Sasuke. And when I got to that part in the episode, I said, hold up, wait a minute, hold on. Wait, what? Is she serious right now? I was like, I know you're trying to protect the legacy of Naruto's uh, a master. I totally understand that. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm pretty sure Sasuke surpassed Jiraiya once he got the manga. Yo, Sharingan. Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. So when you, you you start looking at that, right? Later on in the episode, Sasuke, the moment that Boruto says that, he's like, man, I could be so disrespectful right now. <laughs> I could be so disrespectful and just end Jiraiya's whole career right here and say, look, that dude, I surpassed that dude when I was 16 years old. <laughs> but what ends up happening is Sasuke's like, yeah, your mom, your mom was right about one thing. Jiraiya and Naruto, they, they did have a deep relationship but the relationship you and I have doesn't come anywhere close to it and I like how as Sasuke is explaining that you get this moment where Sasuke is deeply reflective and it's a moment that completely pays off for Naruto fans which is you're familiar with the fact that Sasuke when he said he lost his way hell yeah he lost his way for a few years and I like the fact that when Sasuke is talking about how Naruto when it comes to why Naruto was able to push through Jiraiya's training because because he had something bigger than himself to protect. That was Sasuke acknowledging the fact that for Naruto, bringing Sasuke back to the village is one of the things that pushed Naruto to greater lengths of power. And I like how as Sasuke is talking to Boruto, you know, you see the key difference, right? Like I've said on numerous occasions, like Boruto, when it comes to what drives him, 
his whole thing if I'm gonna be a ninja like Sasuke is not a strong enough anchor it's not a strong enough engine for that character he needs something a, a, a little deeper because just to say something like that it's a blanket statement it's, it's a blanket statement where you have a character who doesn't fully understand what that means and so I like the fact that Sasuke is telling like, look when Naruto was training with Jiraiya it's not like my training with you you know Naruto was more driven than you and that's one of the things with Boruto Boruto so far in the anime doesn't have that one thing that's driving him he doesn't have that internal conflict that is being manifested in an external conflict and these two things are at odds with this goal he doesn't have that yet and so I like the fact that Sasuke broke that down and even when you go to Hinata's whole dialogue where she's explaining everything about how Naruto used to be and she says like his ninja way evolved it went back from I never go back on my word to I have the guts to never give up like you start seeing about that growth and that development I think Boruto at this point I think that's one of the things that is gonna make him cling to Sasuke a little bit because in order for him to even begin to understand what it means to be a ninja like Sasuke he has to interact with Sasuke more but he also has to see the darker side of the ninja world and in order for him to even come close to understanding what it means to be a ninja like Sasuke he has to be willing to fully embrace everything about his father. Because you can tell he still gets annoyed when he hears people talk about how great, how special his father was. And it, on one hand, you have that moment where he's completely shocked that Naruto's master, a guy who he was downplaying at one point, all of a sudden it's like, oh man, this guy was critical in the Ninja Wars. This guy actually trained my grandpa on top of my father. I guess he was pretty special. Like, it was one of those times where it's just like, like when you go back to Naruto Boruto the movie right and you go back to the versus Momoshiki adaptation I don't remember if they did this scene in the versus Momoshiki adaptation but I do know Naruto Boruto the movie as well as in the Boruto manga the whole thing was is they had that moment where Boruto is talking to Naruto and saying like I want to learn more about who you used to be I know the anime did this part but not this part here so the part that they didn't do was where you have that father-son fist bump and you have those two go on their separate paths and they just double down on the fact that they are going to work harder to understand each other in the manga they're paying that stuff off they're paying that stuff off in a credible basis now the other thing though the other thing is is i feel like they're setting up something with that artifact like and when boruto said i feel like i've seen that somewhere i almost wanted to say that we saw that in the versus momoshiki arc like i remember seeing the patterns that are on that jar and i wonder if that's going to be something that gets uh brought up in sasuke's briefing with naruto in the next episode i'm not I'm not completely sure but i want to say i saw that in the versus momoshiki arc in one of the scenes that the anime added to that arc now going even further into the episode you know there's a few small moments i mean this is a lighthearted episode so it isn't like this super deep plot thread in order to connect but you know there are a bunch of fan service moments you know the whole thing was just this this exploration of boruto trying to learn who jiraiya really was and i thought it was pretty funny how all the adults like no you're too young you're too young there's no way for you to be able to read this uh novel and then once the bookkeeper at one of the flea market shops starts to get bored to the makeout tactics all of a sudden choji just yanks the book and you're just seeing that like all these older characters at one point it's almost like a rite of passage they all the boys have at least at one point read the makeout tactics novel and like when boruto's asking sasuke like hey can you tell me what's in the novel and sasuke's like look don't go there he has a dark gloomy expression thought that was funny i thought it was funny how boruto basically finds naruto's stash of the makeout tactics he not to takes a quick read and says nah you can't read it and I, I i thought that that was cool now one final thing that goes on with this episode that i feel like is worthy of being talked about it's the fact that as boruto is going through trying to gain that information about the makeout tactics you know you get this one scene where sasuke is preparing to eat dinner like Sakura and Sarada have made dinner for him and that's actually a nod to something that's going on in the Sasuke not the Jin Raiden novel but the Sasuke Retsunen novel where all of a sudden you know you have in that novel Sarada she's making all of Sasuke's favorite foods without any help from Sakura and what I what I like about that is how as Sasuke reads the note that Sarada left for him Sasuke reads it 
and then if you pay attention to it he has a very soft expression drawn on his face and he slips the note inside of his uh, inner pocket on his cloak now some of you guys might say why is that a big deal well here's the thing right in the Sasuke resident novel you have that moment where Sasuke has an internal monologue and he actually openly speaks dialogue and he talks about the fact that his missions take him out the village for a prolonged period of time. And every time he comes back, you know, he notices something different about Sakura's hair. He notices that Sada's grown a little taller. He notices that she has new uh, interests. And he talks about how he gets lonely on those missions and how he genuinely misses his family in ways that he can't really put into words. And so stuff like that, I like that because it's showing more of the humane side of Sasuke. So I thought that that was cool. I really thought that was cool just to see that moment right there because it's almost like a little wink, wink, not not because I, I i tell you guys all the time like the boruto series has numerous moments that indirectly refer to stuff that happens in the novels or in the data books or in some of the uh interviews like they have numerous nods to where if you're somebody that's read everything you totally catch on to what they're doing so i gotta i gotta end off by saying this you know i know some people are like oh i can't wait for next week i can't wait for the urashiki stuff you know this was just a filler episode i'm not gonna call this a filler episode i'll call this more of a transition episode and i like the fact that they basically took the template from the gotta see gotta know kakashi sensei's true face which was actually a special chapter that masashi kishimoto drew when the naruto series is ongoing so so I like the fact that we we got something else in that template where instead of it being about Kakashi, it was actually about Boruto learning more about Jiraiya and learning what kind of ninja he was. I, I, I definitely think that this was something just to get ready to prepare fans for the upcoming arc where you see Boruto interacting with Kid Naruto. I think that this was something specifically meant for this, but the end of the episode is a transition also into the events of the next episode where Boruto teams up with Sasuke because Urashiki is in the village but as my episode question to you guys okay since this was an episode all about Jiraiya Sensei tell me your favorite Jiraiya moment and let me know what you think the legacy of Jiraiya is but as always guys if you like anything I had to say don't forget to comment rate subscribe and share thank you so much for watching until the end have an awesome day guys <laughs>